and welcome to another episode of McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we're going to be talking about compound interest specifically in the context of geometric sequences. In this particular video you'll learn how to write a compound interest geometric sequence and how to use it to find a term. You'll also use this formula to be able to find how much interest was earned over a period. This is suitable for Year 12 General Maths in Unit 3 and 4, as well as Year 11 Math Methods in Unit 1. If you've got any questions or you'd like to make a comment or request a particular video, my email address is at the bottom of the screen. Let's get started. Let's take a very brief recap on compound interest. Compound interest and geometric sequences are for exponential growth and decay. Now compound interest in particular is a form of exponential growth, that means it keeps growing and growing. Something very special about compound interest is that we don't earn money just on the amount that we borrowed or invested, but we also earn interest on the interest. And there's some great videos around that show you the power of how that works. The recurrence relation for a compound interest is written in the formula sheet for the QCAA as a n plus 1 equals r times a n. I'm going to take you through what this particular geometric sequence formula means. So A, subscript N, is the value of an investment or a loan after N compounding periods. So for example, if N was equal to 3, that would be the value of that investment or loan after 3 years. The value of R is the interest rate as a decimal divided by how many compounding periods they are. And we add 1 to that because this is exponential growth. If we didn't add the 1, we would actually see a pattern of very serious decline. So we don't want to have our money declining when we're investing it. We certainly want it to be growing. So we add that to the number 1. A with the subscript N plus 1 is the value of the investment or the loan of the time period immediately after a n. So if the time was 30 years, then a n plus 1 would be 31 years. Something very important to note with recurrence relations for compound interest that a at time 0 is the principal. This is the money that we start with. Now a recurrence relation is different to the formula for compound interest. That's something we also need to learn um, and memorise as well. Although I do believe that is on the QCAA formula sheet, but you should know the difference between the two. A recurrence relation is for only finding the next term, whereas compound interest is something that we use to find terms well into the future. So this is our formula here for a recurrence relation, and it's important to know the difference between this and the compound interest formula. We're going to take you through some worked examples now. This first worked example uses the same figures for four, four different parts. A person invests $5,000 in a bank. It's compounded at 6% annually. Write this as a recurring relation. Now it says 6% per annum, that means it's compounded once a year. So our compounding period is one. So we're going to take that QCAA formula. First of all, we're going to transform that interest rate of 6% per annum into the value of R. So I as a decimal is that interest rate of 6%. That would be 0 0.06. And the number of compounding periods we have is 1 because it's compounded annually. So we're dividing that by 1 and then we're adding 1 to it. So our decimal is going to be 1.06. Now this is our form from the QCAA's formula sheet for a recurrence relation for compound interest. So we're going to simply substitute the two pieces of information we've been given. We know that the starting amount, A0, is going to be 5,000 and we also know that the interest rate is going to be 1.06. So we write the recurrence relation exactly like this, AN plus 1 equals 1.06 AN. And then we need to put a comma and tell the reader what the starting value being the principal, A0, is going to be, it's 5,000. The next part of our question asks us to complete a table to show the growth of the investment after three years. So we're simply using this recurrence relation starting at A0 and we're going to be building the compound interest onto that year after year after year. We're going to do that for three different rows. So if I use my formula, 1.06, now we're starting at A0, we're going to multiply that by 5,000 and we get our amount at a0 plus 1, which is the amount at the end of the first year, and that's going to be $5,300. That's A1. Now you'll notice that A1 is then popped into that first column, because that's our next year, 
and then we're going to multiply that by 1.06 and our period at the end of the year a2 is going to be five thousand six hundred eighteen dollars that's how much money we've got at the end of the second year but we're not finished the question wants us to do it after the end of three years so once I do the same process again, A2 pops into the first column, I multiply that by 1.06 and I end up with a finishing value. Now the question wants to know how much is in the account at the end of three years? Well that's going to be A3. And how much interest was earned after three years? This is where you need to remember the formula A equals P plus I. Remembering that A is the amount at the end, P is the principal, and I, capital I, is the interest in dollars that is earned. Now this is a formula that you won't see on the QCAA's formula sheet, so you do need to rem remember this one. Now remembering P, the principal, is also equal to A at time zero, 5,000. And we already worked out in our previous part that A was equal to A3, and that's $5,955.08. So if we substitute that into the formula and do some manipulation to transpose and make I the subject, we'll find that I is $955.08. Now, you'll notice in the question, I wasn't asked what is the value of I, I was asked how much interest was earned. So it's important that I write a statement at the end of this. The interest made was $955.08. Let's move on to a new worked example. This is the same figures, the same person's invested $5,000 in a bank, but instead of it being compounded yearly, it's now going to be compounded monthly. Same interest rate, 6%. We need to now change this into a recurrence relation. The main thing that's going to change here is that value for our interest rate. Remember, the formula for that was I as a decimal, 0.06, and we have to divide that by the number of compounding periods. Well, now there's 12. So my formula for R becomes 1 plus 0.06 over 12. And when I put that into my calculator, I find the value for R is going to be 1.005. Nothing else in the recurrence relation will change from our previous question. Now I'm asked to use my calculator and the iterative method to find the amount after one year. So I simply need to add the principal into my calculator, 5,000, and press my equals button and it will come as my answer. And now I need to multiply that by 1.005 and then I press the equals button. And if I keep pressing the equals button 12 times because there's 12 periods in one year, I will end up with 5,308.39 on my calculator. I suggest you get your calculator out now and have a go for yourself. How much interest was earned after one year? Now remember, we've already talked about the formula and we've already substituted in here the new interest um, that was earned, well, the amount at the end, $5,308.39. This is with compounding monthly. So now I find that when I compound monthly, I'm going to earn $308.39. Now the last part of this question wants me to work out what the difference is between compounding annually and compounding monthly. Well, compounding monthly, my amount at the end after that period of time was $5,308.39. And remember, we did that table all the way back at the beginning and we found that the amount at the end of one year was 5,300 when we compounded it annually. So the difference between the two is going to be $8.39. So we're basically making an extra $8 interest by compounding monthly instead of compounding annually. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it all depends on what the interest rate is and how much you invest to start with. So we also need to write a statement for that. Now what if you wanted to find a value, say 30 years into the future? Well, the problem that we experience is that a geometric sequence or recurrence relation only helps us to find the next value. So if I wanted to find A30, I would first need to find A29. And that would mean I'd have to go through that iterative process, especially if it was compounded monthly, 12 times 29 times to get there. We don't really want to do that. So this recurrence relation for a compound interest formula does not really help us to find values a long way into the future. It really only helps us to find the first few um, elements or first few terms of a compound interest recurrence relation in a geometric sequence. Now, if you wanted to find more information about how you can find that value 30 years into the future, you're going to need to use the compound interest formula, which is on the QCAA's formula sheet. I did mention that earlier in this video.
I've also created a video on how to do that with a variety of multi um, worked examples. So there's the video link there. And if you wanted to go and click onto that, then you'll be able to go and watch a bit more information about how to do that. But our focus today has been purely on that recurrence relation side of compound interests. Well, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the Jacaranda MassQuest U12 textbook, where I've taken these worked examples from today. And I'd also like to thank you very much for listening and hope you've learned a lot from this video. Have a great day.